In this video, we are going to interact with the plots, do more data visualization, and that's going to set us up for the statistical analysis in the next video. So we're going to use a tool in MATLAB figures called the data cursor tip. Once we activate that tool, that's going to allow us to click on the plot and get some information about that image pixel which in our case corresponds to an fMRI voxel. And that's what you see in this screenshot here. So I picked this pixel on the image by hand by clicking on it, and then opened up this little window. And yeah, I'll show you two ways of how to work with this information in MATLAB. Notice also that this image here, this frame, this is one frame of the movie at six seconds. So this is not the end of the movie, this is somewhere in the middle of the movie. So we're gonna want to redraw this figure at time six seconds post stimulus. Okay, so once we pick a particular voxel by hand, we are going to get that index, that coordinate for that voxel, and then generate a time course, which you see here in this plot. So each line here corresponds to the event-related bold response from a different condition or different stimulus eccentricity. And it's pretty neat to see that in this voxel, there is an almost perfect monotonic relationship between the bold response and the eccentricity value. So this is condition one here, and then we have condition two in this like reddish orange color, and then three here, and then uh, four, five, six. By the way, it's a little bit trivial that this voxel gives the biggest response to condition six. Remember that I picked the voxel for these time courses because it showed a deep red response in condition six. Now, neuroscience data sets can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And so whenever you are selecting data, it's important to understand whether the way that you are selecting the data is going to bias the results towards a particular outcome. So that is actually the case in this graph. That's fine for now. This is qualitative interpretation and uh, educational purposes, but it is something important to keep in mind that you need to select your data in a careful manner. Of course, once we have all the code to generate this plot, you can continue exploring what these event-related bold time courses look like for different voxels. All right, so this is our goal for this video. Let's now switch to MATLAB and start coding. So here we have the figure from the previous video from the animation. Now, you can see from the title that this is at 15 seconds post stimulus. So this is not the image that we want to use to select a pixel. So what we need to do is figure out how to get this video to run again, but stop at six seconds. And the way that I'm going to do that is actually just by running that uh, for loop here to create the animation, but only for one time step. So I'm not going to loop through all of the time steps. I'm only going to run this through for one time step. And which time step is that going to be? Well, we do want it to be at six seconds. So you might think of just, you know, setting this variable to be six. However, when we go back and look at our time vector, this is the vector of seconds for the uh, event related bold response data matrix. You can see that actually because it starts at minus two, the, the sixth element in here does not correspond to six seconds. So the index number six actually corresponds to time point three seconds. So therefore, in fact, what we want is the ninth time point in this event related bold data matrix. So what I am going to do here is write the number nine and then add a percent sign to comment this out. So now I'm going to run this for loop here it's going to run the animation, but the entire for loop is actually just one single value for this time index here. So this is a pretty useful trick when you are working on code or debugging code inside for loops. You can set the for loop indexing variable just to be one specific value corresponding to yeah, some value that is uh, relevant or of interest. And when you do this, it's a nice method, but don't forget to <laughs> delete this. Otherwise, you know, your production level code, your analysis code, might accidentally be shipping out just like this, and you're only running one time point or one data set or you know, whatever this loop is going over. Okay, so rerun this entire loop for the animation, which is actually just creating the map at one single time point. Okay, very nice. So now what we wanna do is activate the data cursor mode. 
So this is step one. Now there's two ways to activate the data cursor mode. One way is you can do it by clicking on the figure itself. So notice when you hover the mouse on top of an axis, there are some plot interactive tools that automatically appear up here at the top. So for example, you can zoom in and zoom out. You can activate the pan tool to move this image around. What we want now is this one. It looks like a little text, like a little chat box. And that's for data tips. So you can click on it and that activates the data tips. The other way to activate data cursor mode is to type in the command window, data cursor mode on. And that does the same thing as pressing the button here. Okay, so now what we can do is click. Uh, and I'm just left clicking on the image somewhere. And that automatically uh, creates this little window. It tells me the image XY coordinates and the, the color and the, and the val intensity value information. And you can also move this window around. Okay, and then you know we can click somewhere else and so on. So what I want to do now is click on, let's try this pixel right here. So this was step one. Turn on the data cursor mode and click on a map. So now we've picked our time point here, uh, or sorry, our space point here, our coordinate of interest. And then we have two options. So I call this step 2A and 2B. One is we can manually write down the x, y coordinates. That's I've, I've already done for you. Now, of course, I, I didn't pick exactly the same pixel here. So you could write down the numbers 504, 544, or step 2B is to use the mouse to export the uh, information to the workspace. So let's do that. So with my mouse over this little window, I'm gonna right click and you can see it opens up several different options and we want export cursor data to workspace. And that opens up another small window and uh, basically just allows us to specify the variable name. So uh, the default uh, name that MATLAB suggests is cursor info, so let's just go with that. So I press OK, and now we can see, so it says variables have been created in the base workspace. I'm going to type whose, and scroll up and look for a new variable called cursor info. So we can see that this is a one element structure. So let's have a look at this thing. Let's see what is contained inside this structure. So cursor info, we have two fields, target, which is an image, and position. Now this position, of course, is the same thing as this here. So we can also write down that picks two plots, this is the pixel that I want to plot data from, is cursor info dot position. Okay, and then just out of curiosity, let's see what this looks like, uh, what, this, what this target field is. So I'm gonna write cursor info dot target, and that tells me that it's an image with the uh, with these two properties. And the main thing that we are interested in here is the C data or color data. You can see this is actually the same size as the uh, brain maps. So we can even make a, an image of this. Let's generate a new figure. And let's see, this is cursor info.target.c data. And I'm gonna make an image of this. And this is exactly the image that I was clicking on over here. Now, of course, it doesn't look exactly the same. The color map is different. The color scaling is different. The aspect ratio is different, but it's the same data. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Now, so now, uh, yeah, so we can do, uh, I think I'll, I'll, well, I'll just show you this just to confirm that it's going to give us a two element vector. Actually, I will run this code here. And uh, basically, this is just going to make sure that we can exactly reproduce the time course plots that I showed in the slides. So we have a little bit of a disparity in indexing here. We have this variable pix to plot, which is x, y coordinates corresponding to the x, y coordinates on this map. However, we know that the event related bold response data, so let's type size of ER bold just to remind ourselves what this matrix looks like. So it is a conditions by voxels by time matrix. So how do we find this x, y coordinate in this long vector of voxels? Well, the answer is we use the same image lookup matrix that we've been using several times previously to do the opposite conversion, to get from vector into matrix. Okay, so I'm going to input two numbers here. This is going to be the x coordinate, which is pix2 plot 1, and then the y coordinate, which is pix2 plot 2. And that should give us 
a single number back. So this tells us that this particular pixel, or actually it's you know the, the other one that I selected, 400 and whatever it was, that is located at index number 21,000. So the 21,000th element in this vector corresponds to the pixel that we selected over here. Okay, and from there, the rest of this is fairly straightforward. So we are going to generate a plot, a line plot, with the x-axis values as the time vector, and we want the event-related bold response. Now we want this particular pixel, all the time points, and we are going to plot all of the conditions. So let's generate that plot, and here's what that looks like. Not surprising, it looks pretty similar to what I showed in the slides. However, the, the version in the slides has two additional lines. We have a horizontal line, so a, a black solid line going across at the bold response percent change equals zero. And then we have a vertical dashed line corresponding to time equals zero. And of course we have a legend here. So let's add these three components to this image here. So remember, to draw a line in MATLAB, you need to specify two x-coordinates and two y-coordinates. That corresponds to the x and y-coordinates for the start and the end of the line. So here, we already have one line uh, set for us. So this is the x-coordinates correspond to the beginning and the end of the time vector, and the y-axis doesn't change. We're, this is a flat line across the plane, so this should be 0, 0, and it's a black line. Okay, very nice. Notice also I have hold on up here after I call the figure. So that makes sure that we don't, uh, that, that the, the line, the data lines stay on the plot even though the black line is drawn on top. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is draw that vertical, blash, uh, vertical black dash line. So let's see, we want, uh, we need to think about the x-axis coordinates and the y-axis coordinates. So the x-axis coordinates, the line starts at x equals 0, and it goes up to x equals 0. So in fact, the vertical line doesn't change on the x-axis. Obviously, that's the definition of a vertical line. And what's it going to be for the y-axis? Well, we can hard code this to say minus 6 to plus 12. So we could do something like this. However, that is not really scalable because if the y-axis changes for different uh, pixels, then we want to make sure that the plot is adaptive. So therefore, I'm going to write that we just want whatever is the y-axis that MATLAB already selected. So get, get current axis y lim. So we can just run this little piece of code here, and we see that that returns minus 6 to 12. So that is soft coding for what we previously had hard-coded for. Okay, and then this is a black line that we want to be dashed. So I think that looks good. Yep, that looks good. Okay, and then we're going to make the plot look a little bit nicer. So we add x and y axis labels like this. And notice that there's a little bit of white space here at the end of the plot. Uh, this white space really bothers me for some reason. You know, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, just thinking, having horrible nightmares about white space here in these plots. Anyway, Let's get rid of that by setting the x-axis limits to be the boundaries of our time vector here. Okay, and then finally we'll add a legend, and I'm going to call this a job well done.